ladies and gentlemen. So, first of all, thanks for all of you to join us, both those of you who are here physically and those of you who are with us uh, online. COVID is an interesting thing. It has indeed changed our lives and it has also changed this event. Instead of what I said, it would be 400, 500 people, we would be 40 here, but hopefully we will be many, many more virtually. So, uh, thank you very much to everybody for being part of our celebration. 30 years ago, in August, the Danish Cultural Institute opened in Riga. It was the Institute for Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Later on, in the same year, they, it opened in Estonia, and in the beginning of uh, 1991, it opened in Lithuania. And since then, the, the Danish Cultural Institute has been dedicated to supporting and strengthening uh, Danish, Estonian, Latvian, Lithuanian relations. When the Cultural Institute was born, which you will hear a lot more about, it was the first international organization placed in Latvia, and Latvia in its own right, not as part of the Soviet Union, but because we recognized, not legally, but with our presence here, uh, that Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania were or should be uh, independent countries. So that has been a fantastic story since then. With, we were actually counting uh, the other day more than 3,000 uh, events taking place over the years. And it's from everything from high art, from politics, from uh, all kinds of intercultural dialogue, from high-level visits to hundreds of visits by school children, students, and others. The uh, Cultural Institute is um, uh, has to, sorry. The Cultural Institute has today decided to, to 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 celebrate our anniversary here with the project to initiate the project Harmonic Voices. The Harmonic Voices project will continue of two parts, one part which will be this opening, and here we had hoped to have, have choirs, to have singers, to have musicians for all the uh, four countries meeting in person here again. COVID has not allowed that, but hopefully with the mir 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 miracle of modern technology, we will uh, do it, uh, on, uh, we will do it um, online. And thank you to all the uh, music schools that has agreed to participate in and has prepared for this. So that has really been a fantastic process also in these very difficult times. The reason why we've chosen to work with music schools for this project is that this is one of the areas where the three Baltic states has so much to give to Denmark and where we also have something to give back. And it's a way of looking at of getting looking how music can join, can can join us together, and also how music and artistic uh, enterprise is key to the development of uh, all kids. And we hope to see this as a way of uh, highlighting this and learning from each other how we do it in in Denmark and also in the and of course in the three Baltic states. It is really one of the areas where Denmark can learn a lot. From the, Danish, uh, from, the, from the Baltic experience, but also where we can give something back. The second part of the project, and I am not giving, getting any promises to when it be, will be a number of physical meetings between uh, music schools, music teachers, and kids from uh, the four countries involved, in part of workshops, part, part of um, concerts, to concerts together and things like that but we will revert to that once it becomes more possible. If it doesn't become more possible comparatively soon, well then we will also uh, change that into a 
the virtual realm. It is not the same, but it can work. So, once again, welcome. And now, uh, it's a pleasure for me to give uh, the, the floor, the virtual floor, to uh, Rainy Schnottens, the Parliamentary Secretary of the Latvian Ministry of Education and, uh, uh, and Science. So, please, Mr. Schnottens. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, happy to address you uh, here in this virtual uh, setting. Uh, first of all, uh, dear Mr. Simon Drusen Holberg, dear team of uh, Danish Cultural Institute, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Ministry of Education and Science of Latvia, I congratulate you uh, and the Danish Institute of Culture on its 13th, 30th birthday. And I must say, uh, first of all, I will really emphasize the role of uh, Danish Institute of Culture that it has played uh, for Latvia, Lithuania, and, and uh, also Estonia uh, in sort of transitioning our society, in transitioning our, uh, our mindset uh, from the Soviet uh, thinking, the way of thinking to, to more of uh, European-like and uh, North European-like uh, thinking. And that process process have uh, gone through last 30 years. Latvia has changed a lot. And uh, we can't take en thank enough uh, to Danish uh, Institute of Culture for really being with us all this time and uh, helping with this transition period. Uh, also, I want to say that um, exchange dialogue and mutual inspiration is what offers the Danish Culture Institute. And it goes uh, in line and plays a valuable role in promoting also education. Uh, the ministry do highly appreciate the Institute's contribution to strengthening cultural values and uh, are aware of the education uh, that is one, one of the Denmark's highest uh, assets. And uh, we also do know a lot of Latvian students who have uh, had a chance to go to Denmark especially in early 90s to study there uh, and bring some of that knowledge and, uh, and education back to Latvia. So we do uh, thank you for that as well. We also greatly prize the strengthening of friendly relationships uh, between Baltic and Nordic countries. And one of, the Europe, uh, one of Europe's uh, uh, key values is also the linguistic diversity. And uh, I, need, I, I really want to thank uh, and emphasize uh, the contribution of uh, Dan uh, Danish language uh, in promoting uh, our cooperation as well. As you might know, uh, Riga Grammar School of Nordic Languages uh, educates currently 46 Latvians uh, who has chosen Danish, Danish language uh, to study. So we do see a potential of uh, of uh, future cooperation here as well. Uh, the way basically Denmark's uh, ex experience of handling some of the challenges of globalization and also some of the challenges in the past of uh, different uh, stages of Latvia's history, uh, starting with transitioning in 90s, the roaring 2000s, and now the digital, uh, digital uh, uh, times of 2010s. It has been a great uh, cooperation with Denmark uh, and, uh, and also uh, in, the, in the projects like Nordic and Baltic Education Program, Nord Plus, uh, and as well cooperation agreements between individual educational and scientific institutions. So we do see this uh, as ongoing process and we definitely see uh, uh, how Latvia can uh, and, and Baltic states in general can contribute to uh, to development of uh, Denmark and also especially in this in the time of COVID, as uh, the speaker before me already mentioned. So so uh, let's work together on the challenges that future will address, and we do see that this relationship is ongoing uh, with new new potential and. Uh, 
And thank you all again for being with us all these 30 years and looking forward to just also strengthen these relationships in future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Snathens. And now it's a pleasure for me to uh, hand over the floor to the, the Minister of Culture of the Estonian Republic, Mr. Ternis Lukas, who has pre-recorded this greeting. So, please. Dear colleagues and our friends from Denmark, Latvia and Lithuania, Congratulations and best wishes to Danish Cultural Institute and Denmark for our cultural cooperation from Estonia. I hope that celebrating 30th anniversary of Danish Cultural Institute activities in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania with digital concert brings to our mind and heart more and more need for further cultural cooperation and meeting each other at cultural events on site, in concert halls, song festival grounds, theatres, different festivals and book fairs, cinemas and many others. It is by now three decades of more and more cultural cooperation bilaterally, but each Baltic country has longer historical connections and cultural ties and cooperation with Denmark. But there are more cooperation jointly with all Baltic countries and hopefully there will be more joint endeavors in the years to come, thanks to Danish Cultural Institute, indeed. My greeting is recorded in Tartu, in our second town, where is Estonian National Museum as well. There are two fairy tale exhibitions in the museum at the moment. Exhibition named Once Upon the Time and another one, one about book illustrator Estonian Seema Skop to celebrate her 100th anniversary. I mention this because this year is Hans Christian Andersen's 215th birth anniversary. How can one tell about modern and well-known fairy tales without Andersen? It is good to know that many people from Latvia and Lithuania came to the Sea Estonian National Museum and visited this exhibition this summer. Another important joint cultural project is start to becoming, becoming European capital of culture in 2024, preceded by Aarhus, Riga and Kaunas in 2022. Let's do all our best and share these experiences and support each other in order to make Kaunas in 2022 and Tartu in 2024 really European and international capitals of culture of our region and citizens. Congratulations, Tilluga, once more to Danish Cultural Institute and organizers of today's digital concert, Harmonic Voices. So thank, you. <coughs> thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Now it's a pleasure to give you the floor to the uh, Ambassador of Denmark to Latvia. Uh, His Excellency Fleming Center, please. Excellencies, dear guests, friends of the Danish Cultural Institute, those here and those uh, online, it gives me a great pleasure to take part in the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Danish Cultural Institute in Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. As, as Simon already mentioned, 30 years ago, the Danish Cultural Institute was opened in August 1990 as the first foreign organi organization to be established here in Riga before the restoration of independence. 
And exactly one year before the first Danish ambassador to Latvia arrived in Riga in August of 1991. The Danish Culture Institute became one of the first open windows to the West, as well as our channel in Denmark, to understand developments in the Baltics. At the time, there was a strong interest in Denmark in the development in the Baltics. A Danish newspaper took up the initiative to collect funds through a public campaign, asking their readers to give a contribution in support of the establishment of the Culture Institute. The collection of a quite significant amount, two million Danish kroner, was testimony of the broad support in Denmark at the time for the efforts of the three Baltic states to regain independence. Today we celebrate 30 years of activities and events, 3,000 of them are here, and that have been instrumental in developing closer ties, better understanding between the countries, and to help strengthen mutual contacts between the peoples, bringing Denmark and the three Baltic states closer to each other. In the first years, activities were focusing on visits, both ways, of cultural representatives, study programs in Denmark, language courses, as we've also heard, to provide knowledge about Denmark, our way of life, democracy, values, language, etc. Many Latvians, Estonians, Lithuanians took part, and I still regularly encounter people who can remember their first visit, training, or course in Denmark back in those days. My own wife, as an Estonian citizen, being one of them, by the way. The Danish Embassy and the Danish Cultural Institute are very close cooperation partners. The same goes, I have to mention, the two other Danish embassies in Tallinn and Vilnius. Over the years, we have worked together on numerous activities, culture, public diplomacy, business events, on a wide variety of topics, all with the aim to promote cooperation and two-way exchange through art, culture, and society. On a personal note, I have also been working actively with the Danish Culture Institute over the past 20, 25 years of my career. As a young Danish diplomat posted in Estonia in the late 90s, later as director of the Baltic Development Forum, now as the Danish ambassador to Latvia. And I've seen firsthand how the Danish Culture Institute is not only working to build bridges between Denmark and the Baltic state, but is also a strong partner in the Nordic cooperation, in the Nordic Baltic cooperation, and in the wider EU Baltic Sea region cooperation. In these difficult times with the COVID-19 pandemic, I think we have been reminded how important art and culture are for people, how culture can unite people, how culture can give hope to people. It was also culture and languages that kept Estonians, Latvians and Lithuanians united and kept alive the hope that eventually enabled them to restore independence. So in my opinion, promoting mutual exchange to art, culture and society is as important as ever. And from the Danish Embassy, we look forward to continuing our strong cooperation with the Danish Culture Institute over the next 30 years to continue to build bridges and contacts across the Baltic Sea, which we all share. Happy birthday. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And now, before we start the music, it's a pleasure for me to give the floor to my chairman and the lead chairman of the Danish Cultural Institute, Mr. Carsten Hauen, please. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, ministers, partners and friends, ladies and gentlemen, very welcome everyone and thank you very much for coming to the Danish Cultural Institute's 30 years jubilee celebration, Harmonic Voices. These are truly strange times. Instead of meeting physically, we now meet virtually. There's no doubt that COVID-19 will change our lives in many ways. But I think we all experience the experience that we have had the last six months emphasized that meeting between people is absolutely central when we talk about cultural ties. We do not know how it will end, but we know right now that we are just in the middle of a kind of vacuum. 
But I assure you, we would very much have preferred to be present in Riga today. But today we will celebrate the long-standing cultural ties between Denmark and Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Ever since the establishment of the Baltic branch of the Danish Culture Institute on 18, August 18, 1990. Denmark and the Baltic countries have continued to build even stronger cultural bridges and the Institute had helped and facilitated intercultural meetings and dialogue between people. Soon after we opened, the Institute opened its office in Riga on August 18, branches were also opened in Estonia and Lithuania. In 2013, the offices were combined into one located in Riga, and that's from where we now organize and implement projects and activities in all three Baltic countries. We have also more recently branded out to Ukraine and Belarus, and we are increasing our activities in response to the recent protest following the Belarusian presidential election this summer. In the past 30 years, music has played a big and important role in many of the projects carried out by the Institute. Music is great at bringing people together and it inspires people across their cultural differences. It has even been proved that music has positive effect on young people as it increased their engagement with schools learning and strengthens the development of empathy and emotional intelligence, among other things. Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania have all put music education on the top of their agenda and give great opportunities for children and youngsters, youngsters to study and practice music. Denmark had recently begun working on strengthening the entry to music for all even further than before. And we strongly believe that all four countries each have different but very important knowledge and experience when it comes to music education for children and youth. 30 years ago, when we faced, we were facing even greater changes. Music was an important part of the changes in those days. Music, music is not only great bringing people together, it is also, so to speak, a common language that we share in spite of our different starting points. The Scorpions' wind of change became a many, for many a moment a gathering point in a difficult time. With Harmonic Voice, the Danish Culture Institute wishes to create a platform where we can learn from each other and help each other to create even better music education. Today, we celebrate 30 years of Danish Belgian culture exchanges and social development. But we also kickstart a great project already going forward towards the next 30 years of culture cooperation. So as chairman of the Danish Culture Institute, Allow me to wish us all congratulations on the first 30 years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carsten Holm. And now we move on to what this is also about, music. And I also say just one thought. Because we look so much back, another reason to have this focus on school kids and, and music students is also to show that this, we are not just about these 30 years, we are, as the chairman said, also about the next 30 years. And that is very good to have this fundament and to start it with young people. And um, we have uh, a number of schools for the two Danish and uh, one, for, uh, one school from each of the Baltic uh, countries. And you will hear them play, and there will be a little short greeting from uh, some people in between. But uh, I am very happy to welcome first the uh, Albo Culture School uh, to here. And uh, <coughs> so. Um, Jan Jakobsen, are you with us? Yes. Hello. Hello. From the northern part of Denmark. Okay. Dear, yeah. Minister, dear Mr. Ambassador, Excellences, dear all, welcome to Aalborg, which is uh, the third largest city in Denmark, 
placed in the northern part of Denmark, and uh, even the largest Danish music school. Um, here in Aalborg, we are, live in a, an old uh, uh, a coal plant, which is a cultural center of uh, northern uh, Denmark and, uh, and uh, Aalborg called Nordkraft. Uh, we are very happy to be part of this uh, strong and prosperous relation between Denmark and the Baltic uh, countries. Uh, and uh, we will be happy to present some of our pre-music college students we have here amongst our 5,000 students in Aalborg. And I will give pass the word uh, further on to Mr. Emil Rødstein from our music pre-college department. Yes. Thank you very much. So the first performance will be of uh, Aaron Copland's Fanfare for the Common Man. This will be performed by some of our classical brass students and percussion students from the pre-college and also some regular music school students. So the Fanfare for the Common Man, uh, uh, is, uh, it was commissioned uh, in 1942 uh, to be a salute to the American private soldiers who participated in the World War II. Uh, and um, the title Fanfare for the Common Man is a reference to a speech by the American Vice President Henry Wallace, uh, who proclaimed that the 20th century would be the century of the common man. And we thought that was a fitting theme for today's uh, virtual concert. So here's the Fanfare for the Common Man by Aaron Copland.
So we are very fortunate to have here in uh, our school in Aalborg uh, one student in our elite pre-college program who is actually a Lithuanian violinist. That is uh, Miss Lima Paplauskaite. Uh, would you like to send greetings to our friends in the Baltic countries? Absolutely, and I'm going to do it in one of the Baltic languages, which is Lithuanian. Taigi sveiki, kaip jau direktorius ir koordinatorius minėjomis. Šiaurės Danijos kultūros bendruomenė būtent labai džiaugiamės šalių bendradarbavimų ir ką tik ir gėjote vieną muzikinį sveikinį, matau išgėsti ir antrą. Tai džiaugiamės ir lengiam kantrybės ir tiesiog laikykite šio senkių periodų ir Thank you. So we have also uh, one performance by, by our uh, pop jazz students at the pre-college program, and they would like to perform for you the number Space Captain by Herbie Hancock.
Thank you very, thank you very much to the Albert Culture School and uh, Atul Lima. And now we move on to this country, to Latvia and to Riga and to the Riga uh, Cathedral Choir School. So uh, it's a pleasure for me to introduce Sepinix, the, the head of the school, and he will also introduce the performers. So please can. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good, good afternoon to everyone. Tere estima, sveiki lietuvoje. What you was, saw, that was quick insight into the everyday routine of Riga Cathedral Choir School. First of all, I have to mention that the school is a part of the biggest constitution and it's called National School of Arts. And it consists of four schools, Riga Cathedral Choir School, Janis Rosenthal's Art School for Painters and Multimedia Artists, Riga Ballet School, which offers syllabuses for ballet and contemporary dance performers, and Emil Darzinch Music School, as a place for instrumental musicians and students specializing in music theory. I myself am here to represent Riga Cathedral Choir School. My name is Gint Zeplenix and I play the role of principal of the school. We educate young people aged 6 to 16 the education they receive contains not only the mandatory basic package of mathematics, languages and sciences, but also, or should I say more notable, vocal music choir class. Meaning that their daily timetable consists not only of country mandated subjects, but also professionally selected individual one-to-one -one singing and piano lessons, three times a week solfeggio, as well as four times a week choir practice, which leads to performance alongside professional artists at the Latvian National Opera, the organization Latvia's Concert, and many more. Having finished their ninth mandatory grade, they may wish to continue their studies in one of the vocational education program in semi-professional college level. The programs are available choir conducting, academic singing, musical theater, and jazz musicianship. The same principle goes for these programs. Students learn all the mandatory subjects as in any pre-university school, plus specialized music subjects related to their chosen program. Our school are offers contemporary written music program which provides professional level music education from given syllabus for any interested members of the general public for a fee. What ties all our students together are the choirs. This is where they learn to work as a part of team to achieve a common goal. The youngest students who are in the first and second grade sing in their own choir and perform in school spring and Christmas traditional concerts. But from third grade until voice mutation, all the boys sing in the Riga Cathedral Boys Choir. 
This choir has and continues to travel the world, displaying their varied repertoire and musical professionalism ability. All girls from third to ninth grade sing in the, in the girls' choir Tiara. The choir also tour the world, participate in many international competitions, and take part in Latvian national opera productions. The students of college level programs in academic singing and choral conducting sing in the mixed choir. The choir acts as a safe educational space for students to participate and develop their conducting and singing skills. Besides being a part of study program, choir participates in local and international competitions and concerts. The students of college level program in musical theater, singing and jazz music sing in the gospel choir. This is the newest additional to our list of choirs, but it has already shown great success in all sorts of projects. And this is us, Riga Cathedral Choir School, a school that alongside basic mandatory education provides professional training in choral singing, conducting, jazz and musical theatre. Thank you for your time. And now I would like to welcome on stage pianist Tom Sjuknevic and our students Henriette and Charlotte Spruge. They are currently in the second grade and will, for, will perform the Latvian composer Skaidrītis Pugacha's song Godam Zimu Godam Augu, or roughly translated in English, With Dignity I Was Born, With Dignity I Grow Up. Enjoy. Oh, 
Thank you very much to the very beautifully singing young girls and the piano, the, pian the, the pianist against Sevniks. Now we move to, I would say, the from the youngest uh, speakers today to the oldest and one who actually has birthday in two days. It's uh, a great place, place for me to give the floor to uh, the former uh, Prime Minister, uh, Foreign Minister of Denmark, Uwe Lern Jensen, who was also one of the founders of the Danish Culture Institute. So please. Happy birthday. I'm so sad that I cannot be with you. 30 years. It's almost impossible to believe that so many years have gone. When I think back on those days when Rikke Helms went to Riga as the spearhead of Danish connections to Riga, it's, well, like it was yesterday. You know, at that time, we had no official contacts to Riga uh, for a very interesting uh, reason. You see, Denmark uh, had never recognized that the three Baltic countries had been forced into the Soviet Union. And therefore, we had no consulates and uh, we had no official visits, no nothing. We wanted to be able to act quickly the day they got their independence back. And uh, that could be done if we had not recognized uh, the, the enforced status. Um, Rikke went to Riga to establish the Danish Cultural Institute after uh, a lot of voluntary money had been collected. It was a collection initiated by the daily newspaper Politiken. Uh, the late chief editor Herbert Pundik was the man behind the idea and money enough were collected to start and run uh, the Cultural Institute. We used Rikke as our contact in Riga. Uh, Rikke was very quick to establish a lot of contacts and she was active and uh, in the dramatic days of uh, springtime 1991, she was also active when barricades were built uh, around the Saima, when the Saima was threatened by the Soviet Oman forces. So Rikke kept us informed. And here in Copenhagen, we got a lot of visitors coming in from Riga uh, and the other Baltic capitals. And that proved to be very important when we had to act later in 1991 to be the first to establish diplomatic contacts with the Baltic countries. And when our first ambassador, Otto Borg, arrived in uh, Riga in uh, late 91, Rikke was already there and she could guide him through everything. Those were formative and wonderful years. I'll never forget my first visit uh, to the Cultural Institute. It was situated then uh, in the house of the uh, uh, Authors Guild and uh, it was in September 91. Rikke was there. Rikke was here, Rikke was there, Rikke was everywhere. And soon the Cultural Institute got, uh, got branches in both uh, Estonia and Lithuania. Unfortunately, they were saved away later, but we still have Rikke. And the new wonderful location uh, in the marvelous national library uh, is befitting for the relations between uh, Latvia and Denmark. So I wish you all a happy birthday party. Again, I'm sorry I cannot be with you and enjoy some of the good food and drinks of wonderful Latvia. Have a nice day and again, congratulations. Maybe we can see in 10 years. So, yeah, 
Um, and after Uvenda, we move to um, the present director of the Danish Cultural Institute, Ms. Camilla Morhus. So please, Camilla. Thank you, Simon. Your Excellencies, colleagues, partners, and friends. The Danish Cultural Institute has a proud history of creating mutual understanding and connecting people through art and culture. Our branches in the Baltic states are no exceptions. They were founded 30 years ago in a turbulent time of change. The future of the Baltic states was unknown. And we wanted to show our support for the Baltic states fight for independence and a new identity. This became the beginning of an important uh, and mutual friendship between our people. And today is a proof that it has been a strong and meaningful friendship ever since. It is a friendship which has developed over the last 30 years. Our branches in the Baltic states and especially our institute in Riga have played an important part in this development. Through the years, there have been nearly thousand projects and a good cooperation, always conducted with heartfelt engagement and an eagerness to try new ways of expanding our friendship from both sides. Thanks to the governments and all our partners in the Baltic States and former and present colleagues from the Danish Cultural Institute. And a special thanks goes to Simon, you, Amalia, and our team in Riga. You continue to see new perspective and connections through culture with respect and loyalty to what was founded 30 years ago. It would be an endless list to mention all the projects that you have completed just this year. Let me mention a few. Great Taste Zero Waste Conference, H.C. Anderson competition in Latvia, Estonia, and Belarus, Urban Labs uh, several places, leading partner in our EU uh, urban cultural planning project, launch of coordinating facilities for our, our creative industry, EU project, projects in Belarus, Ukraine, and around the Baltic Seas, and lead coordinator of several huge application, the largest of them had deadline this very morning after weeks and weekends of intensive work. I am deeply impressed by your high level of activity and the broadness of your projects. Sometimes it makes me wonder if there are more hours in the day at your office than in mine. So I'm proud of being a CEO for such an ambitious, innovative and dedicated team. And I wish I could stand side by side with you today in Riga and celebrate. But unfortunately, we are prevented by the current situation. Before I round off, I want to give my warm thanks to all our Estonian, Lithuanian, and Latvian partners and friends. None of this would have been possible without you. So congratulations to our 30 year old institute and to our colleagues in Riga. I do not doubt that there will be many more years to come. So thanks for your attention. And uh, our last greeting is from the person that's been mentioned most here, I think, today, my illustrious predecessor, Reggie Hams. So please. Sveika Latvia. Hello, Danias Kultura Sinstuts. Hi, Simon and Un Institute Darnieki. Shodien is Lioti Griba to boot Kopa Jums Riga. But here from my home in Copenhagen, I'm really happy for the possibility to give you my personal congratulations. The Danish Cultural Institute was the first foreign organization to establish and run offices in Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia during the very historical period of the singing revolution. The Institute came as an uh, 
political support in cultural wrapping, offering cultural exchanging and exchanges and mutual projects. Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia received the Danish Cultural Institute with warmth, with eagerness to collaborate and with support and much good work and many fr friendships were made. My 13 years in the Baltic countries, from out of the Soviet Union to into the EU, from 1990 to 2003, were dramatic and emotional years for the Baltic countries, as for me personally. I recall this period with pride, with humility, with big gratefulness and much of love. And I'm happy that the Institute is still going strong and working and expanding on full power. I wish you all the best and many, many good years to come. Skål. Thank you very much, Rika. I'm sure that those of you who are present here now know the basic story of the Cultural Institute pretty well. Um, but now we go back to what this is primarily about, the music. And we go to Estonia, to the Tallinn Music High School. So, Isabella Terra. Hello and welcome. My name is Isabella Gauman and today I will be introducing the performer Karit Tairias and uh, the Tallinn Music High School at large. Since 1961, Tallinn Music High School has appealed to young musician musical talents with its unusual education. From one school, you can get both your general and musical education. The word kesk in Estonian has at least two meanings. The first meaning secondary, which symbolizes the basic and upper secondary education. The second meaning center, which could convey a musical center where people come to study and develop themselves musically from all over Estonia. In this school, its spiritual atmosphere carries a lot of meaning. Here, people play their instruments, or to put it more precisely, they interpret, create or compose sounds, conduct, sign and, of course, perform, perform and perform. As a soloist, in an ensemble, choir, orchestra, etc. But more importantly, in this school, it's good to go to practice, knowing that your colleagues are doing the same. And it's easy to discuss the concert experience, knowing that this topic also excites classmates. It's good to strive together for a future full of music, and it's good to know that this path has been successful before. This school has made a convincing addition to the, both music and other specialties. Many have entered the Academy of Music and Theatre, as, well as well as universities abroad. And some of them have also come back to this school as teachers. Conductors Tunu Kaljuste, Tunu Kaljuste Olari Elts, Risto Joots, Joost, pianists Kalev Kuljus and Ivar Ilja, composers Lepo Sumera and Tunu Kurvits, these are just a few examples of our many famous alumni. And now I'm introducing Karit Teireas Form 9 teacher Marti Raide and some of her classical activity. Karit Teireas has performed with the Latvian Youth Symphony Orchestra, Narva Symphony Orchestra and Tallinn Chamber Orchestra and has attended the 2019 Masterclass of Mira Marchenko. She has also participated participated and won in many competitions, both on national and international scale. Some of them include first place in the 17th international competition for young pianists, Jurmara 2016, held in Latvia, first place in the 13th Mozart competition, competition held in Italy, and lastly, the competition for young Estonian pianists, Sound of Estonia 8, uh, first place. Karit Tairias will be playing Sonatina Opus num uh, number one, uh, number two, composed by Ava Bat. Thank you.
so weiter. Is a, uh, is a Carrieras. And now we move from up north to down south to Lithuania to Vilnius Choral Singing School Lepaitis. And it's a pleasure for me to give first the floor to uh, Anna, a student from school, and after that the uh, polyphonic uh, folk song, uh, uh, the, 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 the choir singing, uh, they're playing a polyphonic uh, Lithuanian song called Kastas Taka with uh, the choir and a group called African Drums. But please, Anna. Hi. I'm Anna from La Paitis Girls Choir. Love us, Anna! Vilnius Choir Singing School La Paitis has firmly established itself in Lithuanian cultural life. Lepaitis performs in the largest concert halls and the voices of the singers obey the most famous Lithuanian conductors. Choirs have a wide repertoire from Lithuanian folk songs to large work with the orchestra. Concert itineraries are widespread throughout Europe. Girls from various general education schools in Vilnius study at the choir singing school. From the age of six, they come to Lepaitas to learn additional music education based on choir singing. Currently, there are about 400 girls in the school who sing in six choirs. They have the opportunity to play a chosen musical instrument, piano, guitar, violin. During the seven years of studies, the girls acquire a basic musical education and after successfully completing it, transfer to an artistic group, the girls' choir. The most talented school girls from the ninth grade can pursue a professional music career. Since 2010, special solo singing, choir conducting, musicology programs are carried out. Students in these specialties participate in and win many national and international competitions and festivals. More than 50 girls between the ages of 14 and 17 sing in the school's girls' choir. Every year, the choir organizes concert trips abroad, presents Lithuanian culture at festivals and competitions, performs programs with Lithuanian orchestras, participates in state celebrations. The pandemic also interrupted our plans. We did not sing Kim Arnes and Magnificat with the Lithuanian Chamber Orchestra and many other planned concerts. Just before the quarantine, we performed the program Lithuanian Fall Contractual and the Sounds of African Drums. Lithuanian Fall Contractual is one of the oldest genres of Lithuanian folk vocal music characterized by a special sounds of seconds with a clear ceremonial meaning. In the project with group African Drums, it was interesting to look con for connections with the authentic sound of West African percussion instruments. We invite you to listen to one contractual of the 12 contractual program. Kastartaka Lithuanian polyphonic song will be performed by Vilnius Choir Singing School, Liapaitas Girls Choir, conductor Yolita Witkavicina and group African Drums, leader Gediminas Machulskis, video projections Pius Chikauskas. <laughs>
Tula Bay. And now we go on to the last performance of the day. We go back to Denmark, to Gladsaxe, just out of Copenhagen. Uh, and it's a pleasure to give the floor to Christian Frank, the director of the uh, Gladsaxe Music School. And also, I should say, a long-standing friend of Latvia and who has been here together with his uh, soulmate, Dennis Paskevitz, in a fantastic jury conference, Frank Paskevitz. So, please, Christian, the floor is yours. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, as you said, I've been here as a musician, or I've been in Latvia as a musician, uh, together with Dennis Paskevitz for, uh, for a long time. And uh, we have been lucky to to cooperate with the, the Danish musician, uh, Danish Cultural Institute, or the Latvian, sorry, the Baltic Cultural Institute, uh, and you, Simon, for all those years. And that's great. And at the same time, yeah, it's true that I'm the director for a small music school uh, in Denmark. It's in Gladsaxe. It's a city just outside Copenhagen. And we uh, do like, uh, it's called it normal music, the teaching of kids. Uh, parents can, you know, can send their kids here to learn playing violin and other instruments, singing, whatever. And, but we also do a lot of uh, cooperations with uh, public schools, doing a lot of projects. Uh, we have the thought that it's important that uh, music and in general should be uh, possible for kids in all ages and from all. Um, uh, social, you know, and, uh, from wherever they come from, as I said in another way, that they should be a part of the music life in general. Not, not necessarily being uh, professionals, but just to enjoying being around music. Well, uh, but uh, in this case, uh, we'll just show you a little video. I kind of fool around in our school, and there will be some great uh, youngsters playing uh, some samba. So, thank you for having us here, and uh, have a nice day, all. Hi, all you lovely people. You're in Riga. I'm sorry we couldn't be there today. I'm trying to do this uh, video from Gladsaxe Music and Art School. Uh, we have a band playing for you right away. Um, they're just about to uh, get ready. They will play some samba kind of thing. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe it will be something that we can hear in Riga one day. I don't know, but uh, we hope so. I hope you have a nice uh, celebration. Um, and this is our part.
So thank you very much now. <clears throat> it's been a big pleasure to hear these very different forms of, uh, of music making and also very different ways of going to the subject of, of how you teach children in music schools. And I'm looking very much forward to how we can gather these forces and how we can continue this cooperation, hopefully physically, in the, in the next year to come. But we are about to end this. I would like to first of all thank all of you who, who was on, online and also all of you who have come here. We, we, it's obviously the, the, the latest um, restrictions in Latvia has made it very difficult for people to go around. So we are very, very grateful that you who choose to come here and we are also very grateful for you who choose to stay at home and, and spend time with us. I would just like, before we end, to have some, give first some thank yous. First of all, I would like to thank the fantastic technical team who has made this possible and also made such a very flawless um, event. And also very much thank you to my team uh, who has been doing it, to, to Elena, to Amelia, and to uh, Emma and Emilia and everybody else who's been involved in this. Now, um, the next jubilee, I don't know if we'll do the 40 years, but unfortunately, because of these restrictions, we cannot invite you for a cup of tea or a glass of wine or something, but but then we can save the money, and then I promise when we do the 40 years, it will be a great bash. Um, but again, thank you very much for coming, and I'm looking forward to cooperating with all of you in the time to come. Thank you very much.